Good morning, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today, we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday, which is the day that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus' disciples in Jerusalem long ago. And many call Pentecost the birthday of the church. And so as we begin our time of worship together, I want to invite you to sing Happy Birthday with me to the church. Will you join me? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear church, happy birthday to you. <laughs> and it's my prayer that during this time of worship that you will experience the presence of the Holy Spirit and be renewed in God's call to live a spirit-filled life of love. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Lord, in this time of worship, we open ourselves to your presence here and now. As you did that first Pentecost, pour your Holy Spirit out upon us. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And now I want to invite you to join in our opening hymn, O Spirit of the Living God. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I just want to point out that the flowers this morning are given to the glory of God and in honor of nurses and other frontline healthcare workers by Dr. and Mrs. Lee Montgomery, who were united in marriage here in our sanctuary on Saturday afternoon. So we thank God for this gift of beauty. Let us pray. Living God, you sent the Holy Spirit to breathe life into your church and to guide us into the way, the truth, and the life of Christ. Through your Spirit, you confirm that we are your people, and so we ask you now to hear our prayers. We pray for all of those who have lost their lives to COVID-19, especially this week as uh, we uh, encountered a, a milestone number. We pray for those who are currently sick, we pray for those who mourn and those who are anxious for their loved ones. Lord, we pray for the unemployed and the underemployed, for all those during this time who are concerned about their financial well-being. Lord, we pray for medical professionals, for nurses, for retail workers, for all those who don't have the privilege of staying home. We pray for our nation, that the barriers which divide us would crumble, that our suspicions and hatreds would disappear, that all people may live in justice and peace. 
Lord, we pray that your life-giving spirit would move in every human heart. May we no longer be captives to fear, but messengers of your saving love, that all may be reconciled to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, I'd like to invite our, our children and, the, and all those who are young in heart to gather around for a special message from Miss Serena. Good morning, friends. It's so good to see you today. I wanted to share with you that some of my favorite Bible stories are stories of ordinary people who, because of their faith in God and the Holy Spirit in their lives, they did incredible and amazing things. People like David, who because of his great faith in the Holy Spirit, he stood up and defeated a giant. Or how about Daniel, who was so brave and the Holy Spirit was working in him that he was willing to be thrown into a den of lions and he survived. Or how about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Fun names, but a crazy story of how their faith in the Holy Spirit working in them made them stand up against a king who wanted them to worship other gods. They were thrown into a fiery furnace, but because of the Holy Spirit, they lived. Incredible, right? Well, today we're also celebrating a special holiday within the life of the church, and that is Pentecost. So Pentecost is a day that we remember that as followers of Jesus, we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit inside of us as we follow Jesus. Isn't that incredible? And having the Holy Spirit is super helpful. The Holy Spirit helps us to make good choices and live the way that God wants us to live. The Holy Spirit helps us to love God and love and serve others. And the Holy Spirit helps us to share the good news about Jesus. So even though we might not have crazy stories like being thrown into a fire or a den of lions, we can be heroes for God too by remembering that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. So let's give thanks for that today and every day. God, we thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us to remember that it is working in us, helping us to make good choices, to love and serve you, and to love and serve others, and to spread the good news about your son, Jesus. It's in your loving name we pray. Amen. I'll see you next week, guys. Bye. So we find ourselves in difficult times, times where maybe some of our divisions and some of our angers are stirred up as a nation. And so I can think of no better time for us as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to share the peace of Christ with one another. So I wanna invite you to share the peace of Christ with anyone who might be there in your household with you or wherever you may be, and also extend that greeting on text messages and social media in any way you can. Peace be with you. So I want to continue to invite you as you're uh, uh, watching us online to interact with us in a variety of ways. You'll find uh, these options no matter where you are. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, if you're on uh, Instagram, on our online church platform, wherever that is, uh, you'll find the option to fill out a connection card. And with a connection card, you just share a little bit of information with us, your name, maybe an email address. Uh, We won't share that information with anyone, but just want to be able to reach out to you and and, uh, welcome you to worship. And if you're worshiping with us, for the very first time, we really want to encourage you to do that, and uh, we're glad that you chose to worship with us uh, at First United Methodist Church. Uh, You'll also see options on all of those platforms to turn in a prayer request if you need uh, something lifted in prayer this morning, so I want to encourage you to do that. If you're on the online church platform, you'll see at the bottom an opportunity for live prayer, and there's someone there, a a pastor or a prayer intercessor, who will will meet you right there, and you can uh, chat 
prayer with one another if you feel like you need that this morning. You'll also see options to uh, give to First United Methodist Church and to support our ministries. And you can give either by uh, going to our church's website at www.firstmethodist.org. There's a give option there. Uh, you can also text a gift by texting FUMCBR to 22525 or you can mail in a check. But this morning I want to let you know about a special giving opportunity. We've had a wonderful ministry emerge uh, from uh, our congregation from within our church uh, known as the Spirited Stitchers. And this is a group of people who who began making masks for people to wear their cloth masks. And uh, what started I think as a small project where they were making a few hundred masks for a local hospital has turned into a huge project where the masks are being sent all over our our country. And to date uh, the Spirited stitchers have made over 18,000 cloth masks. And uh, I want to I want to say a special thank you to Margaret and to Caroline Tyler who really are heading up that ministry and to all of those who are participating in, in a variety of ways. There's people who are sewing, there's people who are delivering, there's people who are cutting fabric and cutting uh, uh, elastic. And so to all of the spirited stitchers, we give our thanks. Uh, but 18,000 masks don't come for free. And uh, we want to invite you this morning to support the work of the spirited stitchers uh, by you using that text to give option that I just mentioned. And so uh, all one time uh, text to give gifts that come in during our worship services this morning. So uh, before noon on Sunday morning, uh, we'll go to support the Spirited Stitchers. And I want to encourage you, even if you just give a dollar, uh, to go ahead and, uh, again, if you text FUMCBR to 22525, you'll get a small form back. And uh, just fill out that form. And even if you give just one dollar, I want to encourage you to take that step this morning as we support this wonderful ministry of care for others. I uh, also want to continue to let you know that we are going to begin some uh, live, in-person, face-to-face prayer services here in our sanctuary. They'll take place this week. So on Tuesday, June the 2nd, and Thursday, June the 4th, we'll have services here at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. Uh, and they will be limited in size. We're asking people to wear masks. We'll have hand sanitizer at the doors, and we do need to practice uh, safe social distancing and hygiene practices while we're here. And we also need you to make a reservation. And so you'll see a link to make a reservation there on your screen. And uh, we'd love to see you as we gather together in this in this sacred and special place uh, for a time of prayer. We'll get to hear a little music, a little, a little uh, scripture read, uh, just as we seek the presence of God and begin to try to gather together safely as a community of faith. And now will you pray with me over this morning's offering? Let us pray. Living God, you sent your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak a word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty. We're grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and in the world. And so may our giving today show our trust in you. We ask your blessing upon this offering and all that it allows us to do in Christ's name. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination, which the words are printed on your screen. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are they not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear, each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I'll show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I mentioned that today is Pentecost Sunday and it's the day we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus' disciples in Jerusalem. But before we get too far in exploring this scripture from today, I wanna make sure that we're clear about something. So Christians believe in a God who is one God, but we say in three persons, we call this the Trinity. And so God is God, but God is present to us in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about God. (laughs) I just wanna make sure uh, that uh, that we know that and that we understand that. And as we talk about the Holy Spirit today, I wanna ask you to think about something. First of all, uh, do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you? And how can you know? How can you know? So at the end of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells his disciples to stay in Jerusalem and to wait for something that God has promised to them. Uh, He actually says, stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And so the disciples stay in Jerusalem like Jesus has, has told them. And on the day of Pentecost, which was a Jewish festival known as the Festival of the Weeks, uh, several miraculous things happened. First of all, there was the, strong, uh, the sound of a strong, violent wind, we're told. And then fire in divided tongues appeared over the heads of the disciples. Uh, 
Uh, there's this miracle of translation that takes place and the Holy Spirit descends upon the, the disciples in a way that, that was palpable to them. They, they knew that God was, was present. So for a long time, when I heard about the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, I thought that the Holy Spirit had never come before that uh, God had somehow had the Holy Spirit sort of bottled up waiting for a special time uh, and, that, and that Pentecost was the Holy Spirit's big debut. Uh, but the more time I've spent with scripture, the more I've realized that, that that's not true, that's, that's not what happened. Uh, the Holy Spirit has always been around, living in, guiding, and empowering God's people. And a quick read through the, the Hebrew scriptures shows this. Uh, it was God's spirit in Moses that led him to lead the people out of slavery in Egypt. It was God's spirit in Joshua uh, that led the Jewish people into the promised land. When Israel needed mighty leaders, it was God's spirit who moved in people like Gideon and Jephthah and uh, Othniel. Uh, when, when Samson, that great hero of the Hebrew scriptures, ripped, uh, killed a lion with his bare hands, we're told it was because God's spirit was upon him. When David was anointed king over Israel, we're told that God's spirit was within him. When God spoke through prophets, people like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, again, we read that it was God's spirit that was in them that was, that was speaking. And I could give you countless other examples of the way that God's spirit is present in the scriptures long before the day of Pentecost. So the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was not a first. Again and again in the Hebrew scriptures, we see that God's spirit came upon people uh, who were called and chosen for God's purposes. But still, something special does happen at Pentecost. So some 800 years before Jesus uh, was born, there was a prophet by the name of Joel. And Joel wrote these words. It shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men will see visions. You see, Joel foresaw a time when God's spirit would be poured out, not on just specially called or chosen individual people, but that God's spirit would be poured out on anyone who was willing uh, to receive God's spirit and to do God's will. And that's what happened at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit wasn't just poured out on Peter, who was their leader, or John, who had been given a special task by uh, Jesus to watch over his mother. The Holy Spirit was poured out on all of them, just as the prophet Joel had foretold. So one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had of God's Holy Spirit moving uh, came through a ministry known as Kairos. And Kairos is a, is a ministry that takes place uh, within the walls of, of a prison. And it's uh, three days of, uh, of discipling and singing and worshiping with uh, people who are in prison. There's men's Kairos in men's prisons and there's women's Kairos in, in women's prisons. And I've been uh, privileged to participate in a few Kairoses. And, uh, but I remember one in particular where it took place at, at, at what the time was known as Washington Correctional Institute. And I was probably one of about 40 men on a team and there were about 40 uh, uh, incarcerated people who, were, who we were ministering to. And we were meeting in a large metal building uh, on the prison grounds, uh, kind of like a big gym or, or a big multi-purpose room. And uh, in that room, we were divided into small table groups. And again, we were uh, fellowshipping and sharing food and there were times of prayer and times of teaching and, uh, and there were times of singing. And so during one of those times of singing and worship, I kind of had stepped back and I was standing towards the back of the room. And as I, I looked over that room, uh, the sight I saw just, just filled my heart. And so I saw all kinds of, of people in that room. Uh, I saw uh, black people and I saw white people. There were Hispanics gathered in that room. There were Christian people, there were Muslims. There was even a guy at my table who said he was an, an atheist. Uh, there were people who uh, were of means and people who came from poor backgrounds. There were educated people and people with, with less education. There were uh, incarcerated people and there were unincarcerated people. And, and it was this amazing group of, of people just of such diversity. But in that moment, do you know what we were all doing? 
we were all singing praises to God. We were singing about God's love. We were singing about God's mercy. We were singing about the love that we were to have for one another as children of God. And in that moment, my heart just, just got so full that it felt like it was going to burst. And there was a, a voice that I heard, and just a, a thought that came into my head, but more than a thought that said, Brady, this is what heaven looks like. This is what my kingdom looks like. And so right about the time I had that thought, uh, I, I heard this huge wind blowing outside the building. And, and the wind got louder and louder. And it felt to me, this was a kind of a, a, one of those metal buildings, like a prefab metal building, that the building was shaking. And I thought, oh my gosh, the roof is going to come off of this place. And I remember looking around to see if anybody else was worried. Uh, there were some guards at the doors. And I, and I thought, well, maybe they can see what's going on out there. And finally, that wind sort of died down. And the worship came to an end. And uh, when that session and that time of worship were over, I made my way over to one of the guards at the door and I asked him, I said, what, what was that loud noise outside? And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, that wind, you know, didn't you hear that wind that almost lifted the roof off of this place? And he said, what are you talking about? And, uh, and I just decided then it was better to keep, keep quiet and, and not say anything more. We tend to think of God as being present with and working through special and chosen people. But here's something you need to know about Kairos. Kairos is not led by uh, pastors, it's not led by priests, it's not led by anybody licensed or trained necessarily for professional ministry. Kairos is what you would call a lay-led ministry. And so I was there as a pastor and I was participating, but I can tell you, I was not in charge. Uh, and, and amazing things happen when ordinary people make themselves available for God's spirit to move in their lives and to be used by God. And, and I've seen it time and time again. Uh, again, we tend to think of God's Holy Spirit coming upon special, upon chosen people. Uh, but do you know what Pentecost tells us? Pentecost tells us, do you know who God's special and chosen person is? It's you. If you're willing to invite God's spirit to come in to you and to be used by God. So uh, I asked you at the beginning of this time uh, to think about something. Does the Holy Spirit live in you? And how do you know? How do you know? So when the Holy Spirit moves, it's sometimes in miraculous ways. I mean, that happens. Uh, and so we read in Pentecost about this mighty wind, about fire. Uh, we read about special gifts in the scriptures like healing and prophecy and maybe speaking in spiritual languages. And some Christian traditions teach that without these signs, the Holy Spirit is not present, without these sort of miraculous manifestations. But the Apostle Paul talks about this very thing in some of his writings, and in particular, he talks about this in uh, the, the book of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And this is a scripture that many of us know from uh, weddings, it's where we usually hear it, where it's usually read. But listen to what Paul says here. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body to be burned, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. You see what Paul's doing here? He's pointing out all of these miraculous manifestations of God's presence, and he's saying, okay, you can have all that, but if you're missing one ingredient, then you're missing the main thing. And what's the main ingredient? Love. It's love. Now, I know some people would say, okay, Brady, but love, love shows itself in a lot of different ways, and love can look, look like a lot of different things, and it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But the good news is that Paul goes on to give us a, a pretty powerful description of what love is and what it looks like. Hear these, hear these words. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So do you want to know if the Holy Spirit lives in you? Do you want to know if you have the Holy Spirit? Uh, are you living in and are you growing in love? That's the question. 
Uh, and I would say at the very least, do you at least want to? Do you desire to live in love? So I need to say something uh, this morning uh, that I hope you will hear in the spirit of love. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I raised in my uh, sermon, it was right after the video of Ahmad Arbery was released, that I, I felt like it was important for us to really have compassion on African Americans in our, in our nation and to be aware of, of how these incidents affect their spirits and their hearts and how they bring fear and worry into their lives. Uh, well, I hate to be talking about this again so soon, but this week we saw two more incidents uh, with uh, George Floyd, who was killed in Minneapolis, and then this, the, the story that emerged out of New York about Christian Cooper, who was out birding, and the woman called the police on him. Uh, there seem to be two voices that emerge uh, while we're having these conversations about race and, and violence done to black people in our country. Uh, one voice says that these incidents are the result of systemic racism, that we need to own that, look at that, and we need to do something about it. There's that voice. Another voice seems to come out that says, well, no, there isn't really any systemic racism in our country. These are just the, 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 the acts of some bad apples, right? And we need to deal with the bad apples, but, but you know, everything's okay. Everything's all right. We don't need, we don't need to worry about our, our system or, or larger, the larger picture. Now listen, I don't have time, and this is not the forum to go into a discussion or a lesson about racism or about implicit bias and all that kind of stuff, um, but I would encourage you to, to read and study about those things and educate yourself. Uh, but this is a time uh, where I want, I want to say something, and again, I want to say it in love. And the first thing I want to say is to my black brothers and sisters, I see your pain, and I hear your pain. And I want you to know this, you're not crazy. Uh, I do believe that there is systemic racism at work in our nation. Uh, and I want you to know that uh, I, I think it's time for us to do something about it. The time is long past for us to do something about it. And I also want to say something uh, to my white brothers and sisters out there, especially my white Christian brothers and sisters. We can't pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, which is our prayer, uh, while we turn a blind eye to the very real suffering of African Americans in our nation. Those two things can't go together. And so it's time for us uh, to open our eyes, to open our hearts, to admit that there's a problem, and to do something about it, to take steps to do something about it. So on Pentecost, God's spirit descended in tongues of fire. Uh, and I've always wondered what that looked like. What, 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 what were those tongues of fire look like? And you can find all kinds of pictures and all kinds of images of that. But I found myself searching for images this week and I came, about one, I came up upon one in particular that I wanted to show you. Uh, and so let me ask you, when you look at this picture, what do you see? What do you see? Uh, this, this came out of some children's curriculum or something, right? So you're supposed to take some Play-Doh and make the shape of the flame above those, those people's heads. But, but what do you see? Let me tell you what I saw when I first looked at this picture. And I think maybe it's because the people don't have faces. Uh, but what I saw was candles. I saw little people candles. And, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, <laughs> maybe that says it as, as well as anything else. And maybe that's what, the, what God was trying to say to us on, on Pentecost. You and I are called by God's spirit to be like candles in the world and to let the light of God's love shine in everything that we do. Listen to me, because of Pentecost, we know who God's special and chosen people are. It's you, it's you. And so go, invite the spirit into your heart and into your life. Let the light of God's love shine through everything that you do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So as we conclude our time of worship today, I wanna to remind you and invite you to a few things. Uh, remember those prayer request options are there and we would love to lift your requests to God in prayer. And also wanna invite you to a gathering that we have called Believe and Belong. And uh, Believe and Belong is a, is a membership conversation to become a part of First United Methodist Church. We believe that the Christian life is best lived out as a part of a community. And we'd love, if, if, you, if you're looking for a church home, for you to consider making First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge your church home. And so uh, Believe and Belong right now is meeting online, and so you can uh, join in from wherever you are. And the upcoming dates for that are uh, June 28th and June 30th. You'll see some information on your screen about that, and you can reach out to Karen Milioto for more information. And I would like to invite you to join in our closing hymn. You'll find the words there on your screen of all the Spirit's gifts to me. Because of Pentecost, we know who God's special and chosen person is. It's you. And so invite God's Holy Spirit into your heart and into your life and go into the world and let the light of God's love shine in all that you do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.